Next speaker is Jeng Guo, a developer evangelist at Xero. He'll be talking to us about machine learning powered API governance. Hello. Hey, hi, Jenks. Hi. Welcome to the Yeah. Thank you, Prashas. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenks Guo. I'm a developer evangelist at Zero. The company I work for makes cloud accounting software for small and medium businesses around the world. We have a little over 2 million businesses using our product to manage uh, their business transactions. Now, let's be honest for a little bit. Accounting is quite boring. Nobody enjoys doing it unless they have to. There is nothing more boring than accounting and software combined together. But on our annual user conference we have for accountants, I constantly hear from them how much they love about Zero. Now, this is just crazy. Nobody loves accounting software, but they do. They really do. And they say it quite loud, especially after a few drinks in a networking party. I think a part of the magic ingredient is because we're not just accounting software platform. We also open up our API platform to allow other SaaS companies to form partnership with us. Growing our ecosystem is an important part of our business. The platform is quite busy. We now have more than 800 certified app partners in our marketplace. On a monthly basis, the API gateway is also quite busy. It gets 800 million API queries, and we send out 2.5 million webhooks out to our partners. My job as a developer evangelist, the main duty is to spread the good words of our API and being the human faces of our APIs. But a part of my job that I also quite enjoy is the opportunity to talk to our integration partners. Uh, we call them app partners here. Uh, and I mean, I talk to them every day. In the last calendar year, the year of 2019, which is a much better one than this year, I have had uh, 250 external meetings with our app partners. That is one per working day. So that gives me something to say about managing relationship with all the API partners. Keeping them, keeping them up to date, I can tell you, uh, is a considerable work. What they're doing with their APIs needs is constantly updating. So it is quite a voluminous kind of work to, to keep up. Running a successful cloud software business is hard. Growing it is even harder these days. In increasingly more connected software world these days, just making a brilliant software product is not good enough. As your user base grow, various demands of integration follows. All of a sudden, whether your product can connect to other system becomes a deal breaker for many users. So software businesses must transform into a platform business so they can easily attract partnership and build integration with other software companies. We're seeing a lot more companies pushing out add-on marketplace, uh, integration services, app marketplaces like ours. Building and managing API platform becomes an important part of growing platform business because API is a language of integration. As the number of partners increases, keeping API usage monitored and well-governed becomes quite tricky and labor-intensive. Losing governance over API usage can be quite risky. Not knowing what changes your partners have made can come can create some tensions between partnership, especially when they're going in the direction where you don't encourage the wrong direction. In this talk, we explore how machine learning algorithm, a type, type of algorithm called clustering analysis, can help you to build an autonomous system that detects shifts and pivots of API usage behavior and makes it harder for an integration partner to go rogue. If your company has been running an API platform for some time now, you probably have some kind of monitoring system in place to ensure the platform is stable. Whether it is a logging system that triggers certain alarm when a breaking event happens or a periodic report that your operations engineer look at. These days, there are also automated API security tools that can detect abnormal API behaviors. It is easy to find out a big problematic usage, such as a big spike of API calls indicating some issues with your partner's system. But what if your partner just silently changed how they used your API because they had a change of business objective with the integration? 
These changes typically go undetected because there are no rogue behaviors with the API. On the surface, the API calls can look quite normal, but behind the scenes, the intended business outcome is drastically different. Until something or some event in a platform forces someone to take a closer look, you usually not know about it. Now this exposes a problem, a hidden problem in all API platforms. Someone can completely pivot the use case of your API uh, than they have originally proposed to your platform. In my experience, some of these pivots can cause problems when it is problematic and term breaking. It can cause lengthy investigation, long engagement back and forth with a partner. Sometimes tough negotiation is involved and potentially lead to shutting down of the API access. For example, if we're a CRM system and we have a conversion partner who brings a lot of customer to us, but now they suddenly start to read a lot of data from our API platform, which indicates they might be churning people off, or maybe they have started a service to back up the CRM system. Would you allow it? Should you, should you need to talk to them about it? Another example, just quickly, a security add-on that pr protects the services uh, user services by validating customer data suddenly start to read a lot of contact details. Uh, what they're doing on the back end is still is actually read the data and sell this kind of software products to them. So it becomes the lead generation tool uh, to sell soft, sell to other software vendors. You probably want to ask them to stop this because some users might dislike it. There could be other use cases that your partners might be breaching and might in, in, include, might, might be a good uh, way to introduce formalized commercial partnership. For example, if they're starting to provide lending services or financial services with your data, you might be eligible for some revenue sharing. These are all possible scenarios that can be done by an API partner who is an API user, but if they're being quiet about it, they usually get away from it. A poorly governed platform will rely on manual tasks to be informed by of any misbehaving partners. They rely on end user reporting, so maybe the support team picks it up. They they ask partner to self report to account manager, uh, partner manager. In some cases, they they pretend nothing happens. They look away and just wait for the incident to happen and react passively. A well-governed API platform requires all partners to be transparent about their current use cases of the integration and mandate any significant changes in the integration needs to be reported and reviewed by the platform team. The ways to make sure the governance is in place, however, is quite heavy-handed and man manual. They typically ask API engineers to audit partners uh, for API usage periodically, which takes time, a lot of time, they ask account managers uh, or partner managers to constantly check in with the partner, which takes a lot of meetings out of their days. They mandate uh, partners to report pivot of use cases of APIs, uh, so make them self-policing, but uh, people can be really quiet about it and sometimes a little bit dodgy. As you can see, if you want to keep the platform players honest and playing fairly, you will need plenty of human resources from API experts to enforce the rules. Is there any way to make this process more automated, more proactive or passive, so we don't have to lose sight of what's going on in our ecosystem? So let's solve that problem. What we want here is an AI expert system that helps to replace our human API, uh, API experts. Replacing is a strong word. I should say work with our human experts so they can focus on tasks that has a higher value. But we need to first take a look, closer look at what API experts do when similar things happen. Let me ask you this, when, when an API partner or user causes an issue, who do you speak to first in your organization? Is it a developer relations team, if you're lucky to have one, uh, the support team, the engineering team, or the partner manager or sales team? Whoever it may be, the first thing they will take a look at is how the APIs were called now compared to what they were doing before. So they can see if there is any difference and come up with analysis and make hypotheses on what they're doing. What kind of problem is this? What kind of problem we're looking at here? It is important to know the type of questions we're looking at because without knowing the type, we can't find the optimal solution to it. 
So finding out behavior changes out of ordinary, it sounds like finding black sheep in a herd of sheep. So is this a normally detection problem? Anomaly detection is a really mature field that is already being implemented in signal processing, for example, to eliminate noise, finance, to detect credit card fraud. In manufacturing, they use it to de defect, uh, detect defects. Uh, it is also using networking, data mining, and cybersecurity, uh, for example, identifying attackers from normal user. This is a problem of identifying rare items, events, or suspicious observations. But are partners really doing something suspicious? Not really. It might be a normally detection problem in isolation of one API partner or API user. But if you take a more holistic look at the whole busy ecosystem again, you'll find the real problem is actually a categorization problem. The partner didn't try to do something bad. They just changed how they use their API platform to fulfill another business purpose. In fact, in ecosystem, it's quite common for partners to make changes to empower other use cases. So jumping from one group to another is actually what they're doing. In machine learning world, categorization problem is best solved by clustering analysis. Clustering analysis has been maturely tested, applied to problems such as customer segmentation and buying behavior analysis. Clustering analysis is a type of unsupervised classification, which is used in machine learning to tell how similar or distant the data set are from each other. We can use this technique to classify the use cases of API partner and detect shifts in behaviors. The distance of the data point represents how similar the API usage profiles are. When a partner use case jump from one to another, it is like a data point on this diagram jump from one cluster to another. You might want to stop me here and ask, hold on a second, do you want me to get every single API calls content, that is the request responses, uh, send them into an AI box, which I don't understand, and find out what patterns they are doing? No, that is, that is not what I'm saying. To be able to profile and partner's API usage, you don't need to inspect every single API call content and payload. You only need the high level information. Most API platforms have logging systems, such as uh, uh, Splunk. You can use external tools these days, Splunk, Datadog, Sumo Logic, et cetera, to tell which, uh, which partner used what API endpoints and how many times they called over a period of time, say one month. Uh, they can, I call these the metadata of APIs because they're general information about how partners use APIs, not the exact payload of them. That is all we need to be able to profile an API partner uh, of their behavior. They're, so there is no need to do a major piece of engineering work on the existing infrastructure. You can just tap into the logging system with a small server running the queries. I have proven, I've done a proof of concept of uh, this data and it, it is able to detect qualitative changes in partner's behavior. By the way, unsupervised learning does not mean that there's no human involvement at all the model or inputs still need to be finely tuned by human experts to make this work. Now let's do a, do a scenario. Let's pretend we're, we're running a CRM SaaS business. We can call ourselves a platform business now because we now have partner A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven important softwares rely on our integration to grow their business. There's also a plan to grow the ecosystem bigger, so we're really committed down this lane. Now these seven integration represents different use cases. We can get the usage data from our logging system fairly easily. So for all seven partners for a period of time, let's say one month, you'll get some similar data to this table. We can see that there are some patterns we can find here that partner A and B, the top ones, they are generally interested in uh, posting data. So sending data to our contacts. And also they're creating some business transactions through invoices. The middle ones uh, are also doing this, but they read more data than posting it to us. The bottom ones do not care about contact information. They do exchange fair amount of uh, business transactions, but uh, they are the only ones uh, carrying the inventory. So they might be doing something with e-commerce softwares. If we standardize all those numbers, so a huge API call in a month doesn't blow up the whole profile, uh, there is a method called mi maximum minimum normalization method or standardization method you can use. We can get some data 
uh, similar to this without the noise of the volume of APIs. What clustering analysis does is to find out how similar those profiles are between each partners. Now, how do we start? Step one, we dumb down the data. So we simplify the problem by only looking at two endpoints, two data. Uh, by looking at two methods, which represents two different use cases, in effect, we reduce the complexity of the problem to two dimensions. Having human experts look at this categorization and tweak the type of clustering analysis used uh, to or change the number of clusters in inputs, you can get something pretty close to what a human prediction can get. In this case, we can see that F and G uh, are graphically grouped together because they're quite similar based on their profile. E, C, D, which are the middle partners, they're there. And at the top partners, A and B, we actually separated them. So there's four clusters. There are four types of different behaviors. The second step, you can guess it. We're going to introduce another complexity. That is to look at another endpoint's data. So the problem becomes a 3D problem. And you can visualize it with a lot of tools. But at this point, the human expert can still help you to conf confirm whether the usage is correct by looking at it. Now, looking at C uh, Looking at the inventory data, so that's a post inventory, so they're creating items, products, whatever in our system. Uh, and by adding that dimension in, we can see uh, it actually becomes five categories because G is actually, uh, A and B are actually quite far apart if we look at this. What's next? The idea is, uh, is you increase the dimension uh, step by step and do it many times, many iterations until the data is until the algorithm is as accurate as the human or close to um, close to the human. Beyond 3D, we can't really visualize it. it. It's really about putting stuff in and observing the outcome and confirm that with the human expert. It's called the training the data set. Now, the end resu result you get is a list of category IDs or group IDs uh, coded by some libraries uh, to suggest what which integration is similar to which one. So they group it together. A and B are in one group, CDE are in one group, FG are in one group. You can use this when something changes, it means their group ID will change. You can use this change to actually detect, um, detect, be a trigger point to automate some flows. For example, if someone jumped from one group to another, it indicates changing usage behavior, and they might be starting sending inventories, this is all your opportunity to inquire about their changes. Maybe they have done an API upgrade. Maybe they have new user use cases, or uh, they have, uh, uh, or this can be an opportunity to sell your premium APIs. What kind of clustering analysis algorithm should you use? It turns out there are many, many ways to define a cluster mathematically. There's a centroid model, for example, uh, k-means algorithm is 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 most popular. Uh, distribution model uh, clusters are modeled by uh, using statistical distribution. There's also quite interestingly uh, the neural network model, which is most well known uh, as the uh, self-organizing map. Finding the right model can take some time. Hence, I, when I say unsupervised learning does not mean there's no human effort, there's still quite a bit of human work to be done to find the right model and fine tune the models. Detecting changes in API use cases pivot is, uh, is labor intensive and requires human expertise. As more and more company value being the platform business and they're growing their API uh, platform and attracting more partnership, losing sight can be risky. Using clustering analysis, machine learning algorithm is able to provide a great way to increase your governance at scale. Now that's all, that is all from me. I believe it's a question and answer time now. Hi, Prashant. Hi, James. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. I will share that. Yeah. So, first one is uh, what size of API platform is suitable for this system? Yes, the system actually can work on any any size. Uh, the size and the data set you put in is actually one of the input uh, to the AI machine learning model. 
so you can work on any system, but it, if you're if you only have uh, less than ten partners or twenty partners, I think it's a it's a work that uh, the engineers can do themselves, and you don't need an autonomous system. But if you have fifty partners and and like us, we have eight hundred partners who are all um, doing different improvements all the time. Um, you'll probably need a system like this. Okay. Uh, who in the company should build it, or do I need to hire an AI engineer for it? Yeah, so so when I when I researched this and did my proof of concept, uh, I was thinking, uh, do I have enough skills to do this kind of uh, project? But it turns out that you only need to learn uh, clustering analysis and know the steps of uh, doing this training the the data set. It's actually quite simple. I believe the API engineers on your team can also uh, can also do it. Um, but if you have access to a API uh, AI coder or machine learning engineer. Definitely utilize it. They can do it much faster. Okay. I think if I were to put on this project, it'll probably take me one to two months to actually get the data right and train the model well to deploy into production system. Hmm. Great. Uh, the last one. Are there any other features you can add to this system? Yeah. So, so the system that I have built is a um, proof of concept. Uh, the, the thing I really wanted to build out is make the machine learning prediction as accurate as possible. So there's a lot of work to do around that. But also, the automation behind it is, is, is something that I would like to build. Um, for example, automating the communication with partners mm. um, and triggering some other information. Uh, so it can be a great lead. When partner change the way they use their API, it could be a great lead for you to sell some product as well. So there are business opportunities there. Uh, there's definitely automation can be done in that respect. OK, yeah. Uh, one more has come. Uh, what's the most used type of types of algorithm for governing API? Um, so it depends on what you want to govern. So in this, uh, in, in, in my talk, what we're trying to detect is is changing behavior. So for changing behavior, you categorize them, and if they jump out uh, of that area, uh, you can detect that. So clustering is my way of solving uh, some problem that a lot of people think that only human can do, uh, but in fact, machine can do that as well, uh, as well as human. So for detecting changes, you can use categorization. In marketing, people do that all the time. They categorize customers together, and when they change their behavior, it goes to it goes to a different group. Uh, so that's when they know. I, I want to spread the idea of using this algorithm on mm -hmm. the API platform, so you get more governance and be more proactive with your partners. Oh, great! Yeah. Uh, so uh, please do include your contact details in the deck, which you will share with us for publishing uh, to the larger forum. I'm sure this is a uh, this will be of great interest for many uh, people, and they will be reaching out to you. Thanks, I I can send, and uh, I'll share my details. Yeah, thanks, thanks, James.